to learn the good, the bad, and the reality of the nomadic lifestyle, click the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Click the bell notification. I was sitting around thinking this morning that being in these city parks, uh, we're in Texas right now and there's a lot of city parks you can camp at from anywhere from three to five days and uh, free electric, free water. I've actually seen more wildlife here than I do in the National Forest. I, I, <laughs> I remember we were just in the Coconino National Forest, what, maybe a month ago. And I was really expecting to see a lot of wildlife there for some reason. I, I really thought it was going to be conducive to, to it. And the only thing we saw was one squirrel. And he'd come out every day to steal food that he could find left over from the you know campers. Uh, the only time we ever saw any wildlife was West Virginia in the Thomas Jefferson National Forest. A little campground called Walnut Flats. And there was this deer. Uh, she looked like she uh, had a disability of some sort. And she got separated from her, whatever you call those, a herd, <laughs> I don't know. She had a limp and she would come up begging for food. I'm sure a lot of people gave her food and she was real friendly, but that was about, about it. Turkey, saw a turkey, real friendly turkey. But everywhere else, we really haven't seen much. But you come to these city parks and you see all kinds of things, raccoons and possums. And I just saw a whole bunch of doves just right over there. I mean, it's just big, big flock of them. It did get me to thinking about some of the things that I've noticed. Just the other day, I saw a post on Facebook about mothballs in the National Forest. There went some doves. Somebody had spread a bunch of mothballs uh, in between the campground and the, and the bathroom. And this person who saw the mothballs was very upset about it and explained why it was so dangerous to put mothballs out in the National Forest. Well more doves she was really saying how you know it's poisonous and you're not supposed to put them out in the national parks and it, it can kill the children if the child was to pick one up and eat it they're, they're supposed to be used for indoor use in your closets for for moths i decided i was going to post it in my facebook group well then i got to reading all the comments underneath it and a lot of people were saying, oh, that's not true. It's not that dangerous. It, it, there's no rule saying you can't put it out in a national park. And there was a lot of criticism about this lady who was very upset about finding mothballs out in the national park. I thought, wait a minute, I'm gonna check into this. Well, of course, I couldn't find anything stating that you couldn't use mothballs in the national park, national forest, BLMs. I couldn't find anything. Not saying there isn't anything. Just through my research, I couldn't find anything. But what I did find out, is she's absolutely correct. Mothballs are very dangerous. If you or child were to eat a mothball, it would cause liver damage. Well, the same for any animal that would come along and eat them, or your pets. And what it does say about mothballs is on the back of the package, there's an EPA warning, Environmental Protection Agency warning, and you have to, by law, follow those rules on the back of the package. You know, we always talk about pack it in, pack it out. Another example, people not packing out what they packed in. Mouse poison is another one that I hear about a lot. Now, I, rec I do notice that there are mice out in the National Forest. I get it. Uh, just this last summer, a mouse got underneath the hood of our truck, ate some wires, caused us a lot of mechanical problems. A lot of people criticize me because I trapped mice in a mouse trap. And uh, because you're not supposed to kill the wildlife. Well, I actually did go to the National Parks page. I couldn't find anything in the National Forest, but I did go to the National Parks page and the National Park actually sets up mouse traps also. However, you cannot use mouse poison because if a mouse was to eat that poison and say an owl decided to eat the mouse, now you've killed the owl also. Or let's say the mouse dies somewhere and a snake comes along and eats it, or scavenger like a raccoon or possum or something comes around and eats the dead mouse, well, you've just poisoned the, the, the scavenger also. And we put lights underneath the hood now, and cayenne pepper seems to be the big solution. We sprinkle cayenne pepper all over the engine and the wires, and it keeps everything away. Spiders, mice, squirrels, everything. So that seems to really help. And then inside the camper, we use a live trap I've seen people actually kill ants. You know, there'll be ant hills all over the place. There's a lot of ant hills in the National Forest, a lot. And those fire ants in, in the Florida are terrible. I mean, they will eat you alive. But that's their home. That's where they're supposed to be. So when you're out in the National Forest out there in the middle of nowhere, 
you can't spray ant poison on the anthill. That's their habitat. Ant poison is for your house. If you don't like ants in your, tri in your camper, for example, and you want to kill the ants in the camper, that's acceptable. I see people walk out in the middle of the field in the, in the National Forest and just start spraying gasoline and stuff on it. Another thing I've seen, and we've talked about gray water before, people dumping their gray water, everybody has different opinions about it, but I have went to the National Forest webpage, and if you have a gray water tank in your camper, you cannot dump that gray water tank on the ground. It, first of all, it's just a large quantity of dirty water. A lot of times gray water tank has chemicals in it, and it also has food particles in it, which attracts animals, the other thing I've seen was they dumped it right in the stream. That's an absolute no-no. You're not even supposed to go to the bathroom. You know, if you go to the bathroom, you're supposed to dig a hole 200 feet away from the, the stream and dig a hole and go to the bathroom in the hole and cover it back up. Well, now you're dumping all those pollutants right into the stream. Your soaps, your shower water, your, your chlorine bleach. Uh, if you have a washer and dryer, all that washer soap food particles okay cutting trees first of all most national forests recognize you cannot cut trees you got a living tree down deadfall and tr dead trees you can't cut those either i know a lot of people do it and each national forest has different rules you can collect stems tr twigs and different things to burn you know if you can pick it up by hand I think most national forests will allow you to do that, you know, if you can snap it with your knee. But if you're having to use a chainsaw, uh, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, State Parks Missouri actually forbid you even picking up sticks for your, your campfire. Wildlife lives in that deadfall. And then the trees, you know, the dead trees, well, that's where the woodpeckers live. And during the last hurricane in Florida, it knocked down a bunch of these dead trees throughout the National Forest. Well, the National Forest Service, the first thing they had to do before they did any cleanup was they had to go around drilling new holes in trees so the woodpeckers had some place to sleep. They remember, you're going into the wildlife's home. You went out there to see the wildlife, so don't go out there killing the wildlife. Thanks for watching. Click like if you like video, and happy travels.